All right, edmodo.com is a website uh, that I, as a teacher, have been using in my classroom uh, over the past few months, and it has quickly become my absolute favorite um, part of my class altogether. And I really think that it may even be that my f uh, student's favorite part of class as well. So let me first show you um, what it's like. It's really easy to sign up as a teacher or a student. Um, when you sign in as a teacher, you're going to go to a class page and you'll have to create a class uh, simply by clicking on create, but it will give you a class code. And you can create classes based on, um, con like if you teach different um, uh, electives or different actual classes altogether. Or if you are working with a co-teacher, you can actually co-teach in one of these things. But regardless, they're going to give you a group code. And this is the code that you're going to give your students. And they will use this uh, to create their accounts. Uh, they don't need to have an email address, which is my favorite part of this. They can All they need is a username and a password. So what they would do is they would go to the Edmodo site, click on I am a student. They would put in your a uh, code for your group and they would create a username, a password, and then they would put in their first and last name. Now what's nice about this site is when they log in as a student, I'm going to go ahead and log off of this and I'm going to log in as one of my pretend students. And actually when I do this I'm going to be sharing with you, um, let's see which one do we want to sign in. Now we should probably sign in as the other one because the other one actually has something I can show you. Okay. And as you can tell, I can't talk and remember my password at the same time. Sure, remember my password. All right, so I'm going to log in as a student. And in this case, I'm logging in as Scout Finch or Jean Louise Finch. Um, if you're not familiar with her, she is the main character and the narrator of the novel To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, so one of the things I'm actually using this site for is to engage my kids in reading this book. Uh, the kids can actually go in and ask questions of each other, but they can also ask questions of the characters from the book because I've created accounts for each one of the character or main characters, basically. Um, the site's really cool, uh, and one of the nice things is, is, like I said, you can see that it allows uh, the kids some anonymity, even though they see each other in class um, and probably know their full names by now. Uh, it does provide them with this anonymity that you know only people who have our class code can get in. I as the teacher can actually manage who is in our class. I can boot people from um, our group. I can add people to the group if I wanted to and I can even restrict what they do. Um, but one of the nice things is, is it does provide them with that bit of an anonymity but the other cool thing is it actually gives them a parent code so that they can give that to their parents and when their parents log in, they actually see an abbreviated version of this page. They can check grades because you can actually put assignments on here and grade them. So you can see uh, Scout has one assignment due. So we can actually click on assignment to find out what it is. And she has to turn in her Great Responsibilities interactive poster using Logster.com. So there's an example right there for, uh, you'll actually find that on our presentation as well um, as an example of a lesson using Glogster.com. Uh, we don't really want to open that. There also you can assign quizzes, they could be multiple choice, fill in the blank, um, just about anything that you want uh, with this site. And what's really nice, and we'll just go ahead and click on launching the quiz here for the fun of it. You can make the quizzes timed or you could not make them timed, whatever you want. Um, so this is a 10 point or 10 question quiz. Um, Scout has a half hour to take it. Uh, so maybe she should take it later. I don't know. But she sh needs to take that quiz. So she can actually switch through classes. She can check her grades in her classes. So if we go to one of her classes and check her grades, this is what she would see. So in this case, you can see that she's got four assignments so far. She's um, Her Great Responsibilities poster's on here. It says she hasn't turned it in yet. Uh, and she's got a couple of other things that have been turned in, and her grades are here. So she can quickly check what her grade is overall. And she can also see little green bars that tell her how well she's doing. All right. So if I go to the home page, I'll show you a few of the things I've been doing besides role-playing with my students on the site. 
Um, there's quite a few things. They are turning in work. They are getting work back that's been graded. Um, all right. So there's quite a few things that I've done. Kids can actually go in and look at grades for assessments, but they can also look at teacher comments on their assessments. Um, one of the things I've been using the site for with my kids, besides doing the basic um, the role play that I talked about before, is I'm giving them a chance to do some show and share. So you see here is actually a kid who uh, was supposed to have made a voice thread as part of a class activity for today. So we can actually open that up and view her voice thread uh, while we're online. The really cool part of this is that this site is actually available um, through an application on both Android and uh, the iPad or the iPod. So if you're using mobile applications with your kids or your kids have smartphones, which a lot of high school students have, even if you don't have the classroom technology, this is something that they could access through their computer, through their smartphone, or through their iPod, anything that they want really. So, oh, hers is kind of short and didn't quite hear it, so maybe she was having some trouble today with that. There you go. So there's conversations that go on here. Another fun thing is, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up one specific class because they're really good at this part, um, is I've actually been posing discussion threads. So a lot of times the kids, you ask them a question in class, and you can hear the crickets chirping. They're staring at each other, they're staring at their book, and nobody's answering. This kind of gives them an opportunity to um, think about the question and come back with a well-rounded answer. Um, another thing that we do is, and we try and get down here, is they've been doing a word of the day activity. So I know as a language arts teacher, and I've talked to other language arts teachers, um, one of the big standards that we all have trouble trying to figure out how we're going to teach it to kids and how we're going to grade it is acquisition of vocabulary. How do you determine if a kid is learning new words? <laughs> So one of the things we've been doing is as we're reading, every day they have to go on, um, or they're asked to go on. It's not really a graded thing, but they're asked to go on and post a word of the day. And we, I taught them about the five different tools that they use when they're reading um, called context clues and the diff uh, different types of them so that they could figure out uh, what the words were. So they have to do this little activity where they have to write down the page they found it on, write down the word as they were reading, um, what the original sentence it was in, uh, what kind of context clue was given to help them figure out what the word meant. And then they have to give it a definition, not using the internet. And then they have to write the word into a new sentence. So you see, they're coming up with a lot of great words, like appalling, um, calomel, uh, intention, inconspicuous, really nice big vocabulary words and as kind of feedback for them to you know show them I am actually watching these I actually used a site called taggle.com and created a word cloud with them and I got a little fancy with this one and they can see this on both their iPads and their iPods um, and I've checked it from my Android phone it works there as well alright doesn't seem to want to work today though been having some internet connectivity issues at the home. Not sure what's going on. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Wait for it. There it is. So I actually put a pretty complicated picture on here. It doesn't really look like anything right now. And that's because I told the kids the more information they give me, the better. The more they give me, the more the picture is going to come to life. And hopefully by the end of this unit, they will have collected so many words that they actually get to see the picture. Just so you guys know, um, it's actually a really cool picture. It says to kill a mockingbird across the top and then has a mockingbird in flight. So the tail you can see coming in down here. What's neat about this, and this is called taggle.com, so I'm not sure if we're going to share that with you guys, is you can actually click on it on one of those words in the word cloud and it will take you to a Google a Google search for that word and usually a definition which is pretty nice so um, even if the kid didn't find it in the the reading they can actually use that to look up the meaning of those words so this site is um, really quickly becoming my favorite thing ever um, so like I said this is the student side of it 
Let me go ahead and see if I can pull up the teacher side. I had a teacher side. There it is. Okay. So this is my teacher side. I took a fun picture of myself to share with the kids because I didn't want um, to feel stuffy. And when my kids log in here, the first thing they usually say is, this looks like old school Facebook. And it is a lot like old school Facebook. Um, it's fun and it's engaging for the kids. Uh, like I said, I can actually manage multiple classes from here. If I have an all an announcement I want to share with everybody, I can share it with um, multiple classes at one time. I'm actually co-teaching uh, this unit with another teacher, so uh, she's not as familiar with the site, not as comfortable using it. So I've been kind of posting uh, information that all of our classes could use. So we have a discussion post for today that we're doing. And what's really nice is whenever somebody sends me a direct post, it sends me an email. But it also has a nice little thing over here under notifications. It tells me all about um, if anybody's replied to a post, how many new members have applied to my group, uh, how many people have turned in their work, and so on. So it's a really neat, neat site. The really cool part about this for teachers, though, and I feel I should share this, probably should have shared it first, because um, I'm not sure if you've made it at this point in the video. Uh, you can set it up as... Uh, with your entire uh, school district on one and it, again it is free but one of the really neat things let's see if I can get to it here is you can actually join different communities and see if I can get to one All right, I'm having a brain fart now. Communities, here we go. So I could go to my language arts community, and you see I have six new posts. And that's because I've been posting questions here, and people have been responding to me. So uh, because I do teach language arts, I check this out from time to time. People will, you know, ask questions um, and answer them. We share lots of different things. And there are teachers from not just all over the United States, but... Um, there was one woman I was talking to on here who was giving me websites and information who's from Australia. So I had to point that out to my kids because they are on the absolute opposite side of um, the entire you know planet from us, pretty much. All right. So there's tons and tons of stuff you can use. Uh, the really cool thing I like is that I can also create a library of different resources for my students and I can even put them into files. So for example, I have a file of To Kill a Mockingbird resources for my kids. It has our unit lessons, like an overview for them so that they can kind of expect what to do each day. Um, there's not that much detailed information on that for them. Um, I posted links to PowerPoints um, that I may have used in class. Um, links to offline copies of the books because as we all know um, when it comes to getting class sets of books it can sometimes be difficult so I wanted to make sure that my kids um, had access to free copies of the book if they wanted to read them on their own so they didn't fall behind and things like that. Um, character charts uh, and link to To Kill a Mockingbird on Spark Notes. So tons and tons of stuff that you can put in here. You can share links, you can put in documents, um, you can put in pictures if you wanted to. You could put in um, activities or lessons for enrichment or remediation. So I really think that the possibilities for Edmodo uh, use with a classroom is pretty much endless. Um, one of the cool things about this is besides having that opportunity, I know not all kids have a computer or access to technology, so um, that can be sometimes a problem. But if you ever have a kid who maybe suffers some sort of illness or, God forbid, an accident um, and has to be at home for a while and they do have access to a computer, this is a great way for you to keep in touch with them and still provide them with all of their work and, and, and support that you would need to until they're able to return to your classroom.